All right, here is Squatter with another one of his inane ramblings. Uh, if I sound absolutely terrible, it's because I am doing this uh, while visiting a family member's house, and uh, I am on a Bluetooth headset instead of my uh, directly connected USB wired headset. So, but you know, that's life. You know, if I sound terrible, then that's life. Uh, all its warts, as I say, you know, here I am, I'm doing my ramble now, there might as well not waste time, you know, keep busy and everything, which is what I was uh, doing uh, earlier today. I was uh, raking the last few bit of leaves that have fallen from the majority of the trees in my parents' backyard, uh, doing uh, uh, yard work chores and stuff for them. Uh, there are still, however, two willow trees in the back, one of which is on our property, while the second of which is on our rear neighbor's property. Um, willow trees, uh, for the life of me, I don't understand, but uh, maybe it's for how they are um, bred or how they evolved or whatever. I don't understand it, but they don't lose all of their leaves until maybe mid-December, and by that point where I am in... Canada, we are probably going to have a fair bit of snow, though it's not necessarily guaranteed uh, because over these last several years, maybe from the mid 20 teens onward, I would say that uh, winter and summer have not gotten shorter, but they have kind of shifted through the years. Uh, when I was a kid, like Halloween at very least would be packed full of snow. Now Halloween is very temperate. Uh, it's chilly, definitely, but no snow on the ground. Uh, it, it, we, when I was a kid, it would be snowy from mid-September practically all the way until, say, March. March, maybe mid-March. That's when it would start melting, right? Uh, and we would rarely have any snowfall after that. But uh, uh, from my memory, at least, uh, from the mid-20-teens onwards to nowadays, uh, we don't start getting snow until maybe late December, early January, and we certainly get a whole lot of it, uh, a lot more so than what there was before. Um, so, but, uh, yeah, uh, that's just kind of my experience there. I don't know why it happened. Oh, and um, so it would start snowing later in the year, and it would also snow later into the next year, right? Like, we sometimes still have snow on the ground, sometimes until May, maybe even a few weeks into May, uh, which never, almost never used to happen. But that's been happening each and every year since the mid-20-teens. I don't know. That's just my experience of it. I, I live uh, in western, southwestern Canada, not in British Columbia, but uh, I, I, am, I do live in western Canada near the Rockies. So uh, you could say, well... We probably have uh, Chinooks and everything. Yeah, sure, I'd be able. I, I'd believe that and everything. I'm certainly not a uh, uh, a stressor over anthropogenic global warming. I really don't think that we have a huge impact on the environment at all. I mean, uh, well, that is to say, the climate, um, because we uh, can actually have a huge impact on the environment, but not necessarily the climate. I would say that uh, definitely uh, uh, Earth's climate has been much more so. Hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. It's not just temperate, 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 temperate. Oh, my God, it's getting so hot, and we're going to have a desertified planet by, you know, 2035 or something like that, because they, they've been doomsaying that since, you know, like since, well, decades before I was born, they were saying uh, in the 1960s and 70s that there was going to be a, a massive cooling a spike, you know, that we were heading into an ice age. And uh, some people say, oh, well, that's just a... a that's been disproven. It's just a myth of global cooling. Well, really, it's more the myth of the myth of global cooling because uh, a lot of people were saying it. You know, It may not have been every single uh, uh, magazine and source, but uh, it was certainly in the forefront of a lot of people's minds. Uh, you know, uh, I know that Leonard Nimoy is no scientist himself, but, I mean, he did have uh, uh, his television show, which I his name escapes me at the moment, but he was like the coming ice age. Uh, and uh, I was like, you know what, though? So it was definitely popular enough to have been mentioned in at least that kind of venue. I mean, give, give that what you will. And, you know, there were papers talking about it, right? But, uh, you know, it's gone from global cooling, and this is more into my lifetime now, 
from global cooling of the 70s to the 80s, which was acid rain, to the 90s, which was the hole in the ozone layer. And then now, all of a sudden, it's, it's come to uh, global warming and climate change. It's, it's, it's always things getting hot. That's the problem. So it's, it's global warming. It's not climate change. It's global warming. Let's just be honest with ourselves, right? Uh, nobody's uh, nobody on the side of anthropogenic climate change is worried about things getting too cold, uh, which they should because cold kills more than heat. Um, yeah, no. So uh, that's that's just what I would say. Uh, I never would be raking leaves uh, in mid November when I was uh, when I was a kid or a teenager. Definitely not. No. Uh, yeah. So that's what I was doing earlier. Got a nice set of leaves uh, or nice uh, entire backyards worth of leaves and it's a pretty big backyard I'm not gonna estimate on the square footage or anything like that but um, there's a, a neat little thing that uh, we have over at uh, the parents place it's a, a yard works uh, leaf blower slash leaf vacuum which I like using uh, sometimes I would just walk like hobble around throughout the yard because you carry it with you sort of like a, a Ghostbusters proton pack right or a positron glider, or whatever they call it, and uh, you just kind of point this gigantic funnel, a uh, tubular funnel, down to the ground, and it sucks up uh, the leaves like it was a vacuum cleaner. Uh, simple enough, but um, the thing is, uh, what I've done uh, more recently is that I've taken uh, a rake, you know, just the the classic way to do it, and uh, I've just walked or I've walked in a circle raked uh, a standing in one point in a circle all 360 degrees around me and then I just go to the edge of where uh, the uh, the extent of my raking was and then I rake another circle and then I bring it all towards myself. So I find that that's uh, the easiest way to do it because uh, it takes me a while to figure this stuff out, you know. So uh, I, I feel quite, uh, uh, shall I say, uh, sa uh, satisfied uh, when I figure out a way that seems to get the same amount of work done in less time using less effort. So but what I've sometimes done is that I've used two rakes at a time, taking uh, uh, the larger rake and the smaller rake and kind of brushing them up as if I was using the large rake as a dustpan and uh, pouring it into, a, that is the garden and leaf debris, into a gar uh, garbage can and then I would bring the bags of leaves up to the front of the house and then later on I would empty them into the green bins because you know we used to be able to leave bags of garden debris as many as we want garbage garden debris doesn't matter what as much as we wanted we could leave it out and the god bless them the garbage men would pick it up guy would be riding on the back of the garbage truck and he'd pick it up and dump it in the back but now no it, basically uh, a truck uh, a garbage truck driver or a recycling truck driver, or a, a, a yard waste truck driver. Um, those are glorified, well, I guess trucker jobs, right? I mean, you, you like any trucker could do it is what I'm saying, right? Like you, you don't need any skills. You don't ever get out of the vehicle. You don't ever touch anything. You, everything is just like operated by a mechanical arm, as I'm sure you're all aware of, right? And, you know, you can only have as much as what can fit in those at least where I am, three bins, blue, black, and green. So, uh, hey, it just seems, uh, I was talking uh, to my family members about it, and I was saying, it's like, you know, uh, all of these, like, these refinements that they have claimed to have done that are making everything better, the environment better, this, that, and the other thing better, they have only served to make life more inconvenient for everybody, right? And then, you know, you can buy these uh, these paper bags, right, that are, like, maybe a third the size, uh, I would say maybe the, a third the uh, uh, fillable area of the volume, that's a good one, the third of the volume of the actual pla uh, plastic bin, and I believe they will pick those up, right? But those bags are so damn expensive. Like, you, I'm not talking about going to, like, your, your uh, average gas station convenience store when you're, uh, when you're actually paying uh, like a premium price for the convenience of just having everything within like 20 or 25 feet walking space. But you go to big box grocery stores like Safeway or Sobeys and you, you try to buy these these biodegradable, compostable paper gar uh, garden debris bags. They were f five bags that were about two by two feet and they were $12. Ludicrous. 
positively ludicrous. Like I am not, I'm not paying for those. Right. I'd rather just buy cheaper plastic bags and then just empty the plastic bags into the garden debris bag. And then, you know what, reuse the plastic bags because I untie them. You know, you can take the edges of the, the, uh, the edge tags of the plastic bag, twist them up until they're really tight and you can push them back through the knot that you tied up with them and you can reuse them, which is what I do. You know, as far as I'm concerned, there is no such thing as a single use plastic. In fact, I use the same straw, plastic straw, and I just keep on washing it after every use. I just keep washing it as if it were a dish. And I have used that same straw since September of 2020. And I'm damn proud of it. You know, because as I said, there's no such thing as a single use plastic. Just keep cleaning it and it'll be fine. And they say, well, the plastic could leach into it, uh, leach out or something like that. Yeah, that that is a risk. But, you know, I got to be me. That's all I can say. You know, I got to be me. So, uh, but yeah, no, so that's uh, kind of what I've been doing for this past uh, couple of days since my last rant and ramble on uh, a video game such as this, you know. Uh, I decided to play not the uh, the 4-in-1 Super CD version of this game, but play the cue card version because it had extra cheats available to it on RetroArch. So, and that's why uh, Bonk is always uh, powered up as if he ate uh, a giant's... Uh, bone of meat right so uh that's why it's like that there and i just cut in the uh the opening cinematic as i said i would uh in my last ramble for uh for just you know to give it a little dose of character right so that's what i do and of course cyberlink power director the worst video editor ever its preview window has solid has almost frozen solid and i'm well that's it yeah sorry to cut it off there but squatter out peace